My name is Andy. I like to spend my time outdoors uh, and also with my lovely equipment. Subscribe if you love to use great gear as well. Sleeping outside in the winter is wonderful. Buying a winter sleeping bag isn't. Either my wallet or my backpack hate them. I own these three sleeping bags. When I bought this first sleeping bag, I didn't know how often I would use it. So this is a rather cheap one. The comfort temperature rating is about 10 degrees. It's a summer sleeping bag. Here I have my newest sort of sleeping bag. This quilt keeps me warm down to about 0 degrees Celsius. Both of these sleeping bags are filled with down feathers. Then here I have my synthetic winter sleeping bag. Comfort minus 11. I've used it in minus 6 in a hammock. There it was comfortably warm. But this thing is huge and really warm. I need to get out of here. Comparing a synthetic versus two down sleeping bags isn't fair. Down is much lighter and more compressible. But to me, my winter sleeping bag was already quite expensive. A good down winter sleeping bag will cost me at least twice as much for something I can only use in one of the four seasons. So we start with the summer sleeping bag. Here it's rated at 770 grams. Plus the bag, 780 grams, that's okay. 610, much more efficient. Let's say 1.4 kilograms compared to two kilograms. And also what's even more important, I think, is the size. For this winter sleeping bag, I need my whole backpack, compared to when you would combine these two together, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. To get some sort of temperature rating when using two sleeping bags, I found a formula on the internet. Add the comfort temperature ratings of the two bags together, in my case 10 plus 0 degrees, minus the temperature I feel the most comfortable without moving, most likely 25 degrees Celsius, then add 7 for whatever reason, and that should be the new rating. In my case, minus 8 degrees. I recommend to look at this number with caution. Many circumstances can affect the sleeping situation. For example, how much insulation material gets compressed, or if you're a warm or a cold sleeper. It's slightly going down. I hope that's not an issue during the night. And never forget that a warm sleeping pad is equally important. I'm gonna try to level out my sleeping position. I'm gonna put this under the ground sheet. Should be interesting. Time to take out the sleeping bag, the reason why we are here. I've read about using the warmer sleeping bag outside, so that the more important insulation doesn't get compressed. But I think it's more important to get as little compression as possible. I'm putting the quilt inside of the sleeping bag, because this summer sleeping bag is wide enough. Actually there's too much room in there to be efficient with the body heat, but in combination with the quilt it makes for a very nice cozy package. One big fat sleeping bag. The most important part when sleeping outside in winter is that you get very warm feet or in general heat up before you go to sleep, especially the feet. I like them medium rare. I just checked the temperature, it's now 0 degrees Celsius. I bet on minus 3 degrees during the night. See you in the morning. Good night. My sleep was great, yes, I was cozy warm, no issue at all, but also the temperature dropped down to zero degrees during the night, sadly it didn't get any colder. I actually hoped for, for minus four degrees or something like that. This is not a really good test for this sleeping bag set up here. Actually, the quilt alone should be able to handle zero degrees. So I was almost a bit too warm in here. This night I didn't even need the hood. 
and also this log which will prevent me from sliding down the hill works great as well. I've used the same setup once before in about minus 5 degrees Celsius. There I had a good night's sleep as well. So the temperature rating might be accurate in my case. If you want to see me camping in the snow, then this video is for you. See you over there.